The truth is, this year's trip to the California coastal redwoods almost didn't happen. Pandemic restrictions had eased a bit and the campgrounds were open, but major wildfires all over the western coast were making travel across both the Sierra Nevada and Cascade ranges questionable. And to make matters worse, a major landslide just four miles south of my camp reservations had taken out the road, and the resulting construction efforts meant accessing areas would be difficult due to both lanes of travel being closed for several hours at a time while crews worked to stabilize the area. But the forecast showed almost 40 degrees cooler on the coast, which meant fog was likely, and it had an insatiable desire to expose some film on scenes of big trees. So I packed my truck and drove through seemingly endless miles of road construction and smoke-filled skies across Nevada, threading the needle between the bootleg fire in Oregon and the Dixie fire in Northern California, which rained down ash as I drove through Lassen and Shasta counties. The Dixie fire would burn on to become the largest single wildfire in the state's recorded history, growing larger than the state of Rhode Island. Despite the challenges, it was great to be back among some of the largest trees in the world, with a forerunner full of cameras and determination to make the most of it. And spoiler alert, I think it did pretty okay. So this will be my base camp for the next five nights. On these longer trips like this, I like to pack an air mattress just to stay cozy. I'm a side sleeper, so it's kind of nice to have a little, little extra. The only bummer about this campsite, uh, I've been in this campground before and it's a great campground, but this particular site that I'm in, it's got a lot of blue sky above it, not a lot of tree cover. So tent's actually in sunlight right now. Forecast is only, you know, 60s today. Uh, and for the rest of the time that I'm here, so like 60, 61, something like that. So it's nice and cool. It's just the direct sunlight's kind of warm. With the road closures uh, from the landslide and all that too, it's uh, my plan is to leave early and come back late after sundown. So uh, the plan is to stay busy all day and it shouldn't be a problem anyway. So here's a pro tip for you. You want to take pro pictures and you want to do your best. You can't do so without energy. So, and to maintain that pro level energy, you got to eat like a pro. So now I'm done with my kid sandwich. I think the plan is going to be to go do some exploring. It's about a little after 2.30 right now, 2.35, something like that. So I've got plenty of daylight hours. I don't think sunsets till like eight or nine tonight. So I got a lot of time. Um, I could go check out some trails and at least scout for compositions. Uh, maybe if I'm lucky, I'll even shoot a photo or two. So this is my third trip to the Redwoods. But the first, uh, it's an actual dedicated photography trip. First two times were just vacations with friends, uh, which was a great time. And of course I had a camera on me, but it was just a DSLR. And everything I shot was handheld, no tripod or anything, because I just wanted to you know, stay mobile and not make everyone stop and wait while I set up a composition. And some of those shots turned out, you know, they're great memories and mostly just kind of filler for Instagram kind of stuff, you know, it's good content. But the purpose of this trip is, you know, to do what I actually consider to be practicing photography, whether I'm shooting digital or, you know, the view camera, which I have both with me this time. So the very first trip, I was just trying to take it all in. It's so overwhelming, you know, just shooting pretty much everything I could with like a medium telephoto lens, 24 to 70. Uh, and the second trip, I shot almost entirely on a 1635, just wide angle. I'm like, well, these trees are so huge, it didn't fit in my little 24 to 70 lens. So why not? I'll just shoot wide angle and I'll just get it all, right? Well, that makes all your trees look really small. You know, the lens distortion just makes it look less impressive than it actually is being here. So I feel like I've yet to actually 
capture what it's like to be here. And I think that's kind of my goal of this trip. Forest photography, I'll be the first to admit, is not my forte. The guys who excel at it, you know, Simon Baxter, Adam Gibbs, those guys, Simon in particular has got like a spiritual connection to this kind of environment. But me, I'm just like, what do I do with it? <laughs> the real challenging part is that it looks amazing. Like in three dimensional space, like when you're standing here looking at it, everything is just amazing. But the second you try to flatten that down into two dimensions and take a photograph with it, it just doesn't translate, you know? And it turns into what Ben Horn would call framed chaos. And I totally agree with them. That's exactly what it is. It's just getting isolation in a subject here is just, it's, it's difficult. So, so far today, I've kind of just started in groves that I'm familiar with. Just kind of like getting out of the truck, getting my hiking legs going and you know, the blood pumping and the ideas going to just kind of, I've been to these places before, but it's just kind of nice to like look out of the fresh eyes and like a different perspective thinking about it from, you know, a four by five aspect ratio instead of like your phone, you know, all of it's amazing. It's wonderful to be here. It's just, especially coming from the hot Utah Valley where it's been a hundred degrees almost every day here. It's, it's 60, it's like 58 degrees here right now, light breeze, birds singing and yeah, it's gorgeous. It's great to be here, but no compositions yet. It's a new day and a new trail, different park actually. So I found a couple areas I want to go work in now. Um, problem is I didn't do my chores last night and I got to load some film first. I meant to do that last night, but man, after driving all day, I was just super crushed so I just took a shower with the bed so first things first uh, set the film changing tent up and load my film holders so I can go do the thing so around here around the coast it's been like 60 degrees so this isn't really much of a problem but in the southwest deserts and you know where it's hotter and stuff uh kind of had some concerns about my film um, on the road especially sitting in a truck sit cooking in the sunlight you know so this is what I came up with check it out so I have this miniature thermoelectric cooler plugs into multiple power sources. Right now it's running off a of USB, but I've also got a battery pack I can run this on for when I park for long term. I tape the door shut so that it doesn't flop open on me and stays cool inside. But it just happens to be about big enough to hold four by five film boxes in a dry bag. And I put it in a dry bag because the back can actually ice up and you can get some condensation and moisture in there. So the dry bag just keeps the film from getting any moisture on it. And then inside the dry bag, all the film boxes are actually in Ziploc bags too, just in case. And it doesn't get cold, cold, like an actual fridge. It's whatever the ambient temperature is, it'll knock it down like 30, 40 degrees, depending on what power source it's plugged into. If you plug it into the wall, it cools a little better. On five volts, it's not quite as good, but it's enough. So it's kind of like air conditioning for your film. Platform shelf in the back of the truck makes a nice work surface for the Harrison pup tent. Thanks, Nick Carver. I'm trying out a new system where recently I picked up a pretty good stack of these Lisco or Fidelity type plastic film holders. And yeah, I know the Toyota ones are better. I just, I'll get there eventually. But since I have so many of them, I'm actually trying a, a new thing here where I've color coded them all. So now certain film holders always have certain types of film in them. So for example, these are yellow. I've got five of these and they always have Ektar in them. So I can do an entire box of 10 sheets and five film holders so I can empty the box. Um, but that way I don't have to do accounting and try to remember what I loaded into what film holders. Um, I just know that if this one hasn't been exposed and it's yellow, that means it's Ektar. And then I got a stack of film holders for Provia, some for Delvia 50, and all the film types that I use, black and white. Of course, black and white's got a black label. So 
I came up on this stump that's uh, it's a redwood stump that's all kind of fragmented. There's a couple of spires and the center's hollowed out. And on one of these shapes, there's a bunch of clovers growing off of it. Uh, and then some ferns in the background. I think it's a really pretty scene. So set the view camera up on it, shooting a vertical composition. It's pretty dimly lit here underneath all these tree canopies. So uh, it's pretty dark. It was a little bit of a challenge to get this focus because it's really dark on the ground glass, even at f5.6 apertures. But I was able to get it framed up and get it composed. It was a little bit of a challenge because there's just so much the depth of fields kind of all over the place on this. You know, there's only so many places I can set my camera up to get this lined up. And I'm actually sitting high and aiming down the scene because I want the ferns to be the background of this image. There's some really hot spots in between the trees here where the sunlight's coming through and I don't want that in the background. So instead of shooting straight, I'm shooting down. So I'm shooting this one with my Fuji 180 millimeter lens. Uh, and I'm pretty close to my subject, so it's kind of filled the entire frame with this stump and all these beautiful clovers on it. I think it makes for a pretty interesting composition. It's a very tight scene. Uh, that's kind of what I'm leaning to right now. I'm looking for things that I can compose that are just really tight, you know, self-contained little scenes so I can try to keep all the absolute chaos out of it because it's just so much. It's, it's hard to compose. But I think this works. So I'm shooting this one at f32, which is kind of my go-to aperture um, on a lot of these kind of things. Uh, it gives me lots of depth of field, which is something I kind of need with this scene because there's so many different objects that are at varying distances from the lens. Um, so that kind of helps me out a little bit, just in case my plane of focus isn't dead on, helps me kind of hopefully get acceptable sharpness everywhere. I'm shooting Fuji Provia 100F on this scene. Uh, took two exposures, and at f32, those exposure times are 20 seconds, so pretty long. Uh, the ferns in the background were swaying in the wind a little bit, so uh, there's probably going to be some motion blur there. Uh, it just kind of is what it is. Whoa. So I'm getting some dappled light just come through the trees and it's actually landed directly on my composition as I'm sitting here filming this. So I'm gonna have to interrupt this and shoot this again because this is absolutely magic. So that was an absolutely crazy mad dash. So right as I'm sitting here talking to the camera, uh, a bolt of light coming out of the tree canopy behind me and landed right on my composition and just illuminated it with this like soft like ethereal light ray thing it was absolutely crazy so i barely had enough time to get another meter reading which actually it was better when i was metering it and it was start i could see it was starting to fade so i had to like just go with what i had you know my best estimate and then just take an exposure so i hope it turned out correct <laughs> but i metered eight seconds at f32 instead of 20. It was that much of a difference with the light on the stump. Uh, and it wasn't like harsh direct lighting from the sun because it was filtered through some, you know, some of the tree branches up there. So it was kind of dappled light. Uh, looked beautiful. I hope that the exposure I got does it justice because it was, it was very, very fleeting. That lasted probably a minute or two. I just happened to look over and everything was changing. I'm like, I had to scramble to get another film holder. <laughs> So only one exposure on that one. I didn't even have time to wait for the ferns to stop moving or anything. I just shot it. So if, the, if there's a bunch of motion blur, oh well. So scratch that. That's three exposures on this scene now, so far. Now I'm actually like hesitant to break my camera down because it's like, that comes back again. It'd be real nice to be ready for it this time. But I don't know. Either way, that was quite a treat, so. So here's those first two exposures. And technically, I think uh, it turned out pretty good. Uh, I like the composition. I think it's framed well. Uh, I like the ferns in the background, just kind of like fanning out here in the corners. I think that's cool. Uh, it puts a lot of emphasis on that one piece of that stump that I was really focusing on. And all my clovers here look like they're pretty sharp. It looks like the plane of focus is right where I expected it. Yeah, it looks tack sharp. Uh, the background falls off in sharpness just a little bit back here, which is totally, I'm okay with that because I really want your eye to kind of come right here. I think what's interesting about these though, is you can already kind of tell I was getting some more warm light coming through the tree canopy there. So that dappled light was already hitting this, this second exposure. And I didn't notice it at the time until later when I was, you know, talking to the camera and then I, it became really apparent that the light had completely changed. Um, but I was getting a little bit of that here already. So I like this 
exposure better than this one because it is a little warmer and it's a little more highlighted on my subject here. Now, the one that I was scrambling to take uh, after this is right here. Here's that shot. And I hate to say, but I mean, it was a reactive shot. Uh, I mean, I was trying to react to quickly changing lighting conditions. But then unfortunately, with the large format camera, everything just takes so much longer to do that uh, it just wasn't quick enough. And by the time I had re-metered the scene, you can see my light was starting to kind of change. It was, it was leaving the composition. When I cut the video to like shoot this again, it was more up here, which is kind of what I was trying to capture. It was just too late and it took me too long to get set up again and exposed one more time. And then because I was aware that this was this was leaving the composition, it was such a fleeting moment, I just shot it and didn't even like wait for the breeze to quit and anything. So I got quite a bit of motion blur up here in the foreground. So I'm not really not not really into that. Background ferns are moving too. There's a there's a ton of motion blur and the lighting is not ideal. It's in the wrong it's drawing your attention in the wrong spot. So uh yeah, I'm not gonna be going with this one at all, but it was still fun to shoot. So I've been sitting here watch the light just kind of come and go on this little scene here and it's done so several times. So I've been able to kind of refine my metering and stuff like that. But I actually went for an experiment this time. I had one more sheet of Provia. Um, I already had three sheets exposed at F32. So I decided to try a shallow depth of field this time. I went uh, F8 and that gave me an exposure time of one over four. So a little experimental, you know, maybe I don't necessarily want total depth of field. Maybe I want a shallow depth of field on it. So we'll see. Uh, if nothing else, I got three other exposures, so. Well, that's about all the money I want to spend on this shot. <laughs> so, uh, time to pack it up, I think. This is the last exposure. I actually really like the quality of the light that's on this foreground stump here. I think this looks really, really good. This is really warm and nice looking. Uh, but focus fall off is right here is just kind of distracting. And I don't really think I like the look of the background unfortunately i think i prefer the shots where it's sharp it was a cool experiment and i'm glad i took the exposure because i wanted to see what it looked like um but uh, unfortunately I, I just don't really like the background and i think it's too bright too it really it's too distracting i don't i don't like that and then the focus fall off just it just looks odd but man i really like the quality of light there on this piece of that trunk i wish that was on one of the earlier ones like on this one but unfortunately i think uh I'm gonna end up probably going with one of these earlier shots because I think they kind of like overall or a better exposure. Probably this one. They all three have got qualities that I like in them. I like the color on this one, but the focus and you know technicality of it is not as good. Um, this one is probably the best overall, but there is some motion blur in the background. The ferns are moving me on me just a little bit. Foreground looks good, but the background's better on this one. So I think what's going to end up happening, I hate to say, is that the final image will probably end up being a composite. I apologize to those of you who hate Photoshop, <laughs> but uh, I think I prefer to have this as my probably my base exposure. And then I'm probably going to recover the background ferns where they're sharp um, from this image. So I'll end up stacking these two and then creating a composite. But yeah, overall, I think I was happy with the composition. Uh, I was happy with the shots I got. Uh, it was a pretty fun experiment here and learning experiment. Hopefully you'll agree with my decision here on the final image. Uh, but if not, let me know down in the comments if you think maybe I should have chose a different image. Uh, but yeah, here's the final image. Thanks as ever for watching, and if you feel like helping me out a little bit, the best thing you could do to help my channel right now is just to hit that like button down there. And if you'd like to make sure you see the rest of the videos from my Redwoods trip, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button while you're down there. Special thanks for watching all the way to the end, that helps more than you might know. Take care, and I'll see you in the next episode.